Welcome everyone to the Double M Innovations Channel. I'm back out here again alongside these high voltage transmission lines with some more experiments. But in this case, we're not going to be under the power line. We're not going to be on the easement. I got a couple of wires strung up, but they're off the easement. And we're going to see how the fields from these power lines are charging up these wires I got strung up. And like I said, this is off the easement now. The two wires that I have strung up, they're about 100 yards long, so 300 feet, each of them. And to the right here is the easement, and the other side is just off the easement. I started planting some trees there. That one stake, you see that survey stake over there that I had before, that was just a boundary marker for the property. And that's where I had that other wire strung up in that other video. The wires are running east and west, and that was the uh, east end or just that. And now we'll go do our experiments on the west end. The wires that I have strung up are of two different sizes. The bottom wire is 8 gauge bare copper wire. I had a bunch of pieces that I spliced together, and actually, the last 30 feet on the east end is actually just galvanized wire. And the top wire, I had some 30 gauge magnetic wire, and I strung that up too to see what kind of differences there would be. And just with this, this is a 30 gauge, that's probably, 30 gauge is probably about the tenth the size of that 8 gauge, but just uh, holding up by this post right here I got in the ground. You can hear it's got a pretty good charge on it. Going right through the paint. The wires are about, bottom wire is probably like five, five and a half feet off the ground, and the top wire is about eight inches higher. The first thing that I'm going to do is just test the voltages on these wires. I have a ground rod pounded in over here about three feet and just wire up got my high voltage meter I'll set that to 2,000 volts connect the one up there and I'll test that uh, heavy wire first 8 gauge wire that 8 gauge wire is about maybe five and a half feet off the ground and 1166, 69, varies a little bit. And I'll go ahead and check that uh, 30 gauge magnetic wire. There, get a hold of it there. And with that one, we got 1338 volts. Now that one is about maybe eight inches higher than the heavy wire. So it's about, see, I think they said the this wire is about five foot five off the ground. Then we got about eight, nine inches in between them. And so just that distance, we're getting a higher voltage. Interesting. I have my converter circuit ready to go now. Pretty much the same circuit as I was showing in another video. Things that I changed is that I now have 2000 volt diodes in here instead of two 1000 volt diodes in the series. And I add a little protection here. added a filter choke that will go through the load, which is just going to be the flashlight. <clears throat> and it's going to be running through an amp meter. So I can test the current, and then I'll test the voltage too. The first test will be just on this 8-gauge uh, wire by itself. So connect some stuff here and get it going. And this sparking, I don't know if you, I can hear it, but I don't think you can see it. And we are getting a 
about 12.9. Have to check the voltage too. Voltage about 2.9 and 12.89 milliamps. Now I'll go on to the little wire. And this is just a little wire going down by itself. And it's going through this little flashlight. I didn't show that before. But this is the little wire, that 30 gauge wire. I got that hooked up going. And we're getting about 15.38 milliamps. Took the voltage over here. About the same. So now I'm going to test them both together, combine them both, and see what happens with that. Both of the wires combine now for this next test to see if we get a boost on the output. And, okay, I'll connect the load, flashlight load, and connect this up to spark cap. Let's see what we get. Still rising, 17 milliamps. Hard to see the load, but 19, I think we're almost up to 19 milliamps. Still going, about well, 19 and a half milliamps. Check the voltage again. Three volts and nineteen and a half milliamps, somewhere around there. So three times nineteen. Pretty steady. So that's the power we're getting out of these wires. Uh, just a little under 60 milliwatts it looks like. Rising up a little bit. Ouch! I touched the wire, I still get a shock from that. If I get away from the wire, look at that, I'm moving my body away from the wire. Let me set this up a little bit better. I can't get the damn thing. There, now we're getting up to me move the meter away. So now we're up to 20 milliamps, 20.3 milliamps. So that's a little over 60 milliwatts. Just my body close to that wire was drawing it down. Pretty cool. Let's see, I'll try the voltage again up here. Yeah, still around around three. Let me switch this. I switch it to the other part of the the bigger part of the flashlight. So the current went up a little bit, but it's kind of settling out. What's the current? 21 milliamps? 21 and a quarter milliamps? But I bet you that dropped the voltage down a little bit. Yeah, 2.7, 2.8. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the wind picked up a little bit now, so I apologize if it's making noise on this video. I'm trying to get down now a little bit below the trees to get out of the wind. But what amazes me now is that 30 gauge wire was actually doing better than that 8 gauge wire. I know it's a little bit higher, but that 8 gauge wire is quite a bit bigger. So I don't think it really matters too much on the size as long as you got a conductor all the way through. 
I suppose, you know, it's just, you know, microamps probably at that high voltage. But having a heavier conductor isn't increasing anything. So I kind of changed my thinking on that. Before I thought maybe it was the surface area or maybe the resistance of the wire. But with that 30 gauge wire, that magnet wire, is still conducting just as much or more current as a heavy wire. So, do some more thinking on that. It's pretty interesting. But anyway, I'll go over that schematic again if somebody was interested in that. I went over it before, but I'll go over it again. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. For a review of the schematics of the converter I'm using, um, this is the antenna. Well, it's, it's just a wire. The power line comes across here. And the antenna is just like this. It's a, a weak capacitive link between the power line wire and the wire is strung out. And I'm taking, when this uh, charges up, this little capacitor charges up, I'll jump the gap here through the inductor. And I'm collecting the power of the collapsing magnetic field into that uh, big filter capacitor. You know, fill this up. And I added a filter choke here, take out some of that spiking, and this is just that LED flashlight. And two kilovolt diodes, and this diode right here, I shorted out probably maybe four of them already. I think they got over voltaged or something. I had to replace it out like four times. I think I need a higher voltage diode here. But anyway, this is the schematic. 